Hello and welcome to this video on your upcoming surgery for an anal fistula. My name is Becca and I'm a nurse practitioner here at the UCSF Colorectal Surgery Center. I'll be walking you through this video to learn more about your upcoming surgery for an anal fistula. It's very important that you listen to this entire video so that you can be prepared to take care of yourself after surgery. Yes, this video is a little bit lengthy, but we wanted to make sure that you had all the information that you needed to take care of yourself after surgery. Although this surgery is simple and certainly not life-threatening, the post-op period and recovery can be challenging. Therefore, it's important for you to learn as much as you can prior to the procedure so that you can be prepared to take care of yourself at home. Thanks in advance for your time and your attention. Here's some helpful tips for navigating the video. This video does contain a lot of information and you don't need to absorb it all in one viewing. You can watch and rewatch this video as many times as you'd like. Just keep in mind that the slide number is on the bottom left corner of the slide. Just an FYI, this training does include detailed pictures of what happens with the surgery. So don't be surprised if you see some images that maybe feel a little bit uh, graphic or intense. We made the decision to show you what exactly is gonna happen so that you're not surprised after surgery. I'll also be popping in and out of the video just to point to certain things on the slides. In this video, we're gonna go over the following topics. What is an anal fistula? What are the surgery options to treat this? How do you treat a superficial fistula? What can I expect at home after a fistulotomy? How do you treat a deeper fistula? What can I expect at home after a CTOM placement? What is the outcome of the CTOM placement? And then some final thoughts and advice. What exactly is an anal fistula? We must start this discussion by reviewing what exactly is going on in your body when you're diagnosed with an anal fistula. I'll be honest with you. When I started here with our crew about a decade ago, I had a hard time understanding what a fistula was. I had a hard time even understanding how it happened or what it looked like or what was even going on in the body when you had it. So I'm going to use some simple words and some descriptions and stuff like that that really helped me when I was trying to understand what a fistula was and how to treat it. Understanding the condition is going to help you make good decisions about how to care for yourself as you move through this sometimes long process of fixing the anal fistula. So let's begin. A fistula tract simply means a connection between two openings. An anal fistula is a tract or a pathway from the internal anal canal to the outside of the skin. Inside the anal canal is a layer of glands that produce lubrication. They're called the anal glands or the anal crypts. I'm gonna pop on the video to point this out in the picture. Okay, so you can see over here, these little wavy type figures, those are the anal crypts or the anal glands. And you can see that they, that that's exactly where that track is starting. You can see that track tracking out to the outside of the body, okay? That's the area of the body that we're talking about. So all fistulas originate, you know, most of them are gonna originate from that wavy glandular space there in the anal canal. And basically what happens is it develops a little pimple, like a little swollen infection that looks a lot like a pimple. And for some reason, instead of just popping out and draining out, it starts to burrow through the skin. You can see it burrowing through the skin. That inflammation wants to find a pathway out of the body. And so instead of draining out for some reason, it becomes this problem and it burrows through the skin and then works its way outside of the body. So that's really it. A fistula is really just a track from the inside of the anal canal, right where those anal glands are to the outside of the body. What is an anal fistula? Many times patients ask, did it come from an abscess or is it an abscess? So very commonly an anal fistula first shows itself through an infection or an abscess in the perineum. The perineum is the area around the anal canal. So basically that infected tract that we know is burrowing through the skin works its way to the outside of the glutes and the perineum, and then it starts to collect underneath the level of the skin, all this inflammation and all that kind of stuff. 
you would have experienced a lot of pain, a lot of pressure. It would have hurt. It would have felt hard or hot right in that area. And you may have even ended up in the ER with your local doctor um, that they cut it open to drain it. Or sometimes it will drain just on its own. So very likely your first symptoms was an abscess at the level of the skin. And again, we call that a perianal or perirectal abscess. Just one final slide here to review the definition of anal fistula, just because it's so important to understand what it is when you're facing this kind of surgery. So an anal fistula is simply a connection or a pathway from the anal glands through the skin and the muscles to the outside. You can see in this slide, there's a number of different types of fistulas. We have this one on the bottom called submucosal, which just means that it is just right at the edge of the, the, the skin there. We have an intersphincteric fistula. We have a transphincteric fistula, which we'll be talking about in the next couple of slides. And then we have the suprasphincteric fistula, as well as an extrasphincteric fistula. The main ones that we're going to talk about today are going to be this inter and transphincteric fistulas. Why is an anal fistula so hard to fix? This is such a great question, and this is such an important thing to understand. Many patients just ask us, just fix it, just stitch it up, just close it up. But we can't do that. And here's the reason why. An anal fistula, that track typically waxes and wanes in size and inflammation. You've probably noticed this. Sometimes the anal fistula, anal fistula track is really painful and then it drains. And then sometimes it's quiet and it causes you no issues. This is really classic for an anal fistula. This is because that tract is constantly managing a bacterial load from the anal canal, that, in, that opening on the inside. So that tract sometimes swells up with inflammatory infectious cells and liquid. And that is when it's painful and then it drains out and you get some relief. Then sometimes the tract quiets down. And this cycle of waxing and waning, filling and draining is what makes it so difficult to fix. I want to explain why that cycle makes it tricky to fix. So I'm going to pop back on the video. Hi. When that track is nice and solid and steady and scarred down, right? Those tissues on either side of the opening, right? So this is the track between my hands are nice and, and steady and, and strong. But when you get a lot of waxing and waning, that tract gets bigger and the tissues around get all filled with, with liquid and cells that cause inflammation. It gets all soggy and boggy and then it drains and it goes down and then it's nice and strong. Then it gets soggy and then it drains. It fills and it drains. It gets weak and then it gets strong. That cycle is really what gets in the way with healing the fistula. And the reason why is that it really weakens the tissues. Makes sense, right? When things are changing so much, when the tissues are being filled with liquid and cells that cause all sorts of problems, it's not going to be easy to stitch at the top. We need to be able to stitch that anal canal end closed. But when the tissues are weakened through this draining, waxing, and waning thing, we can't stitch that thing closed, right? So that's really one of the main challenges of having an anal fistula is dealing with this waxing and waiting piece. Many of our surgeons describe trying to stitch on this boggy, weak tissue, like trying to stitch through chiffon. Maybe you've had like a fancy dress made of chiffon. So it's like stitching through chiffon or even like trying to put together cray paper. Basically, it's trying to put two things together that are too weak to actually hold the stitch. So this is really important to remember and to keep in mind as we move through the discussion of how to fix the anal fistula. All right, as a patient, this is really where you want to pay attention and where you want to talk to your doctor about what kind of fistula do I have. The type of fistula that you have will determine the treatment. So the question is, is my fistula superficial or is my fistula deep? What, what I mean by that, is it intersphincteric where it doesn't actually cross the sphincter or is it transphincteric where it crosses the sphincter? A superficial anal fistula simply means that the internal opening does not cross the sphincter muscles. So these muscles start at the anal crypt glands, like all fistulas, 
but the track works its way out along the internal part of the anal canal and winds its way out into the perineum without crossing the sphincter muscles. Now, a deep fistula means that the tract does cross the anal sphincter muscles. Again, like all anal fistulas, this starts at the anal crypt glands and then works its way through the anal canal sphincter muscles and then winds its way out to the perineum through the tissues of the glutes. This deeper fistula will require a more extensive process to fix. Your surgical options depend entirely on what type of fistula you have. If it's superficial, you'll be treated with a procedure called a fistulotomy. If you have a deeper fistula, you will be treated with a stepwise process that will require probably multiple procedures. It's important to note that often there is no way to know if the fistula is superficial or deep just by examining you in the office. Sometimes the exam in the office will be clear if this is a superficial fistula, sometimes not. Occasionally, some of our surgeons may order an MRI or other imaging study to look at the pelvic structures, but almost every fistula diagnosis will require an initial exam under anesthesia or what we call an EUA to evaluate exactly what type of tract you have. In this slide, I'm just going to go over briefly how to get ready for an EUA or an exam under anesthesia. Again, although some of our doctors may order imaging studies, almost all fistula treatments start with an initial exam under anesthesia. Here's the basics of what you need to know to get ready. Basically, please don't have anything to eat or drink except clear liquids after midnight the evening before your surgery, and that includes gum, candy, or mints. You can have clear liquids on the day of surgery up to two hours before your arrival, and you'll also need to take a shower with Hippocleanse before your surgery. Before your surgery, we'll give you a special handout that goes over this in more detail. How do you treat a superficial fistula? First step, your surgeon's going to take you in to, for the exam under anesthesia, examine your fistula tract, and, and evaluate whether the fistula tract crosses or doesn't cross the sphincter muscles. If the fistula tract does not cross the sphincter muscles, you have a superficial fistula, which can be treated with a fistulotomy. In this picture that you see on this slide, what, what we're showing you is that fistula opening. You can see that labeled there. It says fistula opening, and you can almost see it tracking back into the anal canal. That's the area that's going to be opened up for the fistulotomy. So a fistulotomy is really just a simple procedure where the tract is opened up and allowed to heal back in. We like to say that the surgeon is flaying open the skin or uh, uh, to expose the entire tract, but it really just leaves you with a superficial wound bed that will heal over time. In this next slide, we're gonna show you some pictures of what that wound is gonna look like. Okay, you can see from these pictures that you will have an open wound there at the perineum right next to the anal canal where the superficial fistula tract was. We open that up because the best way for this to heal in is from the bottom up. We want the body basically to heal in from the bottom up. So the doctor's going to put some stitching there on the side of the wound bed, just so just to uh, just so that it can heal from the bottom up. Now those stitches don't need to be removed, which is good. Now the healing from this is actually surprisingly simple. Many patients worry about infection, but that is rare. You will have this open but very superficial wound extending out slightly from the anal canal. So that's really what it's going to look like after your fistulotomy surgery. How can I care for myself after the fistulotomy? Here's what you need to do to take care of that wound. As I said, don't worry about those stitches. They're going to dissolve on their own. You definitely want to take a quick bath or shower after your bowel movement to help clean out any residual stool. But you don't have to scrub or clean too hard. Just a simple shower will do. It's a good idea to place some gauze over the wound bed to absorb any drainage. And if you do have discomfort, you can take Tylenol or ibuprofen. In general, it's three to four weeks or so for this wound to fully close. And you definitely will have some daily drainage. It could be of any color. And you might even have a little bit of bleeding. Again, that is entirely normal. Here's some final thoughts on the fistulotomy. We've included this picture here in the fistulotomy piece. This picture here is going to show you that little white plastic tubing. You will not have that with the fistulotomy. That's a seton. But we wanted to show you what it looks like with the, right after surgery. You will have some gauze 
tucked up into the wound. It'll look just like this picture, okay? So you can remove that on the evening after your EUA, but we do recommend that you do it in the shower or after a bath. It's easier to take it out if you if the gauze itself is wet, okay? And again, you might want to get a handheld shower to help you clean up after the bowel movements. And again, there it is very normal to have some bleeding as it heals. Um, so don't worry too much if you see that on your gauze. Finally, the only real red flag about a fish gelatomy here is just if you have new pain or pressure at the wound bed, that's really the only thing. If you do notice new pain, new pressure, um, something that's that feels like you maybe have another infection, please give us a call in the clinic uh, or email us through my chart. Now let's move on to how do we treat a deeper fistula. And this is going to mean living with a seton. If you have a deep fistula, this means that the track crosses those sphincter muscles and that the waxing and waning that we talked about and the weakening of those tissues has to be stabilized before any surgical fix can be attempted. So you're going to start your treatment with an EUA, that exam under anesthesia. During the procedure, the surgeon will first examine the track and determine if the sphincter muscles are involved. If so, the first step is to stabilize those tissues. This is done by placing a seton drain through the track to allow it to scar down and for the tissue surrounding the track to get strong again. Let's keep talking about how to treat a deeper fistula. So the seton is a thin piece of rubber tubing. You can see it here in this picture. It's this white piece of tubing that's coming out of the anus and coming out of the, the track there. It looks honestly like a piece of spaghetti that's looped through the track. The two ends are tied together with small pieces of string or stitching, but nothing is stitched to your skin or to your body. So it's almost like an earring, uh, like almost like an earring that holds the fistula track open. Okay, how are you going to live with a seton drain? After EUA, you'll go home with that seton drain. You can see from this picture that we've been doing this procedure for a long time. Um, so this is an old picture from one of the medical journals from many, many, many years ago. And you can see that they were using setons even back then. It will stay in place. The seton stays in place anywhere from a minimum of three months to 12 months, depending on how you're healing. I will tell you some patients decide to keep the seton in. Most don't, but for a certain, certain reason, some people will live with a seton for many years. So it's really important just to understand that that seton is just a piece of floppy rubber, keeping that fistula tract stable, allowing that area to heal in, and you really can't hurt it. You really can't. It's also very important to understand what to do with a seton so that you don't feel frustrated. There is a lot of fear and frustration around what can happen with a seton. And honestly, the more you know, the better your healing and your life will be as you go through this process of healing that deeper fistula track. So there's nothing that you cannot do during this part of the part of your healing. That's good to know. You can exercise, you can have sex, you can ride a bike, you can swim, you can go into the hot tub or the ocean, you can go skiing, you can go hiking, you can go camping. Again, there's nothing that you can't do during this part of your healing. So please know that continuing to enjoy your life while you're living with the seton is safe and recommended. We do recommend if you have anal sex to just use some extra lube. Some patients, I'll be honest, decide to abstain from anal sex during this period of their life, but it's not necessary, but it is your personal decision, of course. All right, here's some quick tips about dealing with the seton. After your EUA, you should not be in any real pain or discomfort. If you do have pain, take Tylenol or ibuprofen as needed. You're going to have drainage. This is totally normal. The waxing and waning of the drainage is also normal. So that seton really will drain. You could have drainage that looks green, clear, yellow, even a little bit of blood, all very normal and expected when you have the seton in place. What are the best ways you can care for your seton? 
definitely warm water helps. So take a quick bath or shower after your bowel movement to clean up, but you don't need to do any deep scrubbing to really get it clean afterwards. Also, warm baths are a major, major, major part of healing from aceton. The more warm baths you can do, the quicker that that track is going to heal, the cleaner it's going to keep the area the more quickly all the drainage is going to come out. So it's a really good idea to get into some kind of routine with a warm bath if possible. You also definitely want to rotate that seat and seat on a little bit a few times a week. You don't have to do it every day, but you want to do it a few times a week. Usually people will do it in the bath or the shower. And this is important because it allows that seat on to continue to stay loose enough that the, the drainage can, can leave uh, the track around it. So all you do is just tug on the external part of the seat on a few times and rotate it a few centimeters. You don't need to try to thread the seat on all the way around, okay? I'm going to pop on quickly to show you. So if this is a seton, right? This is kind of going through the hole in the anal canal. All you got to do is just, let's see, what's the best way to show this to you? Just pull on it. Just pull a little bit. Just tug it a little bit. You don't have to tug it all the way around. You just want to tug it a little bit. Just a little, just a little tuck, 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 right? And what that's doing is it's releasing some of these little fibers that grow around the seton on the inside and allowing everything to drain out, okay? The other thing we recommend is just placing a cotton ball at the exit side of the seton to absorb the drainage. This also helps protect the skin from irritation. Okay, there's only two red flags that I'm gonna go over for the seton. There's only two things that we really worry about. One is that if your seton falls out, this is very common. Just let us know and we're going to figure out the next steps. This can happen for a couple of reasons. Either, either the stitches fall off and then the seton threads out of the body or it just disappears. That can happen. It can just fall out and people don't quite know when it happened. Um, depending on your unique situation, we may just have you watch and wait or we may actually take you back to the, uh, to the OR for an exam under anesthesia, but this is not considered an emergency. You don't need to go to the ER or urgent care. Just let us know and we'll figure out the next steps with you. The other red flag is new pain or pressure in the track. So if you have new pain or pressure, just let us know. It usually just means that there's a little buildup of drainage in the track. So we usually treat this by taking more warm baths, rotating the seton, like I just showed you, we may need to give you some antibiotics. Um, and sometimes we'll just bring you back for another exam under anesthesia just to clean that area out too. So just let us know and we'll decide about the next steps. What are the next steps after the seton? You'll keep the seton in for a minimum of three months. This is to allow the tract to scar down and heal in sufficiently to move on to the next step. It is very common though for people to need to keep that seton for longer. Please do not get discouraged or frustrated if this is the case. You will come in for follow-up with your surgeon after your seton is placed. And if you need more time with the seton to facilitate scarring, your surgeon may take you in for another EUA to clean out the track and stimulate healing. Your healing process will be unique to your body. And we can't predict really at the beginning of this process how long you'll need the seton. Many patients need to keep the seton in for longer than three months, so you should prepare for that. Again, remember, this is not to prolong your suffering. I promise your surgeon is just keeping that seton, seton in so that the next step in the surgery has the best chance to work and provide a final solution to this problem. Be prepared for different stages of healing and surgery. Some patients will proceed directly to close the fistula tract. Other patients will need repeat debridement or clearing out of the seton tract to help it scar down or prepare it for closure. Again, this all depends on your anatomy and your unique healing process. We keep that seton in so that when we take that final step to close the internal opening, you have the best chance for success. Okay. So when you're ready to proceed with that final closure of the deeper fistula tract, your surgeon will talk about what the right option is for you at that time. All right. We're almost done here. Just want to review a few final common concerns and issues that we've heard from patients in the past. I want to thank you for your attention and for your time with this video. Big question. Did I cause this? The answer is no. An anal fistula 
is mostly just bad luck. Scientists, we've looked for reasons, but we've yet to find a compelling cause for this issue. Please don't blame yourself. About 5% of the population has a perianal abscess and about a third of those become an anal fistula. Again, please don't blame yourself. Will my fistula become something scary? No, the fistula tract does not mean that you have cancer or that it will become cancer. Fistulas are very annoying, no doubt, but they are not life-threatening. Will a fistula change my life? The answer is no, not unless you let it. This diagnosis is challenging, and I don't want to minimize that. It's challenging really because the treatment course has a lot of twists and turns. We often say that we know our fistula patients better than our cancer patients because treatment can take time and multiple procedures. So your attitude really matters. Keeping this right-sized in your mind is the most important thing. It's definitely okay to feel frustrated sometimes. This is absolutely a frustrating problem, but ultimately this will end. We promise this will end. So keeping that in mind on rough days is important. Finally, can I do anything to help my healing? Set yourself up for success by understanding that healing is unlikely to be a straight line. Focus on how to continue to enjoy your life and do the things you love. And that's the most important way to help your healing. And if you need help or support with this issue, just let us know we're here. And we've seen a lot of people through this issue and we may have some tips or tricks that will help you manage this process. Thank you so much for your attention to this video. Remember that the more you know about your condition and what to expect, the more likely it is that you'll be able to deal with this health challenge smoothly. And again, we're here for you. You do not need to suffer alone. So please reach out if you're struggling. Feel free to review this video as needed in the future if you need a refresher on life with an anal fistula.